Well, hello, everybody. Welcome to Table Talk. We are glad that you're here. I am glad that I am here with my good friend, Pastor Zach. Zach, great to have you with us. It's great to be here. So excited to spend a little bit more time around God's Word. Just wrapped up uh, our first uh, through Exodus 1, and uh, we got some more resources to go through. Brad, why don't you tell the folks at home where they can find the resources? Absolutely. If you go to our website, you'll see it at the bottom, fbcfo.org, and then on our webpage, in fact, any of our pages, if you'll go up in the top right and you'll see some drop down menus go to watch and you'll find chronologically listed our sermons and sermon series you'll also find table talks that complement those what we're doing now as well as some great great guides that we call going deeper there's many many resources on our website we ask you to explore it and and if anyone ever has a question hey tell me about your church send them to our website fbcfo.org well, good. All right. Well, Zach, uh, give us a little bit of an overview of this message that you just preached. Yeah, we did a little bit of an overview last week of where, where we're headed for the series, hitting some high points of the themes. Well, this morning, we were able to dive into Exodus chapter 1. Well, that, that's good. And, and one thing I wanted to say to you is um, as you started, man, what a great story how you tied in the end of Genesis and how it moved into Exodus. That was great. Yes, yes. It was an a exciting part of uh, where we headed for, uh, for this entire series. And so uh, one of the things that I've loved about this, um, this passage See if I can get there. One of the things I've loved about this passage is, is how it points ultimately to Jesus. And that's kind of where we're headed. That's the reason this series is called Deliverer. And one of the uh, directions that we headed this morning was in Exodus 1 was talking about how when we're going from Genesis into Exodus, you have Joseph and uh, bringing his family into uh, Egypt. And the people there are, everything's great. I mean, they have the uh, beautiful land. They have uh, everything seems to be good. But then it says that a king comes and he forgets Joseph and he forgets about all that Joseph has done for the people. Well, then things start getting bad because this king starts, uh, he, he's worried. He, he's in fear of what the people are going to get too numerous for them. And so he starts to lay down, um, uh, oppress them. It actually says he's going to squeeze the life out of them. He's worried that they're going to take over Egypt. Well, they actually, they start multiplying in, in spite of the oppression and they start growing. And so then he says, I'm going to start uh, send these two midwives who are delivering the babies to kill the children. Mm. And all this oppression starts happening. And so what we talked about in the message, the focus was that in spite of the oppression, in spite of the hardship, in spite of all of these difficulties, God is still faithful. God had made these promises that God's people would grow. God had made these promises that his people would still prosper. And in spite of difficulty, God is faithful. And that was really the focus of our message is that even in the midst of difficulty, we see God's hand of faithfulness. Wow. And, and you know, as I, was, as I was listening to the message and then hearing that once again, um, you know, we tend to see, uh, we, we may know of God's plan. Man, he spoke it in his word or he may speak deep into our heart. And then something's altered and we, we just get fearful because, because we're looking at the circumstance and not the plan, the original plan, like this situation. Talk to us about fear. You had said, I want to go a little bit deeper during table talk, the difference between uh, godly fear and the difference between worldly fear. Yeah, no, I'm glad you brought that up, Brad. Uh, fear is a major theme, especially through Exodus 1, and we see that uh, pop up. And so it says in the, in the passage, it talks about this fear of God that these two midwives, Shipra and Pua, have. But we also see this fear, this worldly fear that the Pharaoh, the king of mm -hmm. Egypt, has in this passage. Uh, what is worldly fear? Well, fear of man, fear of losing power, fear of losing control. Well, it can cause us to make all kinds of terrible decisions. It's a terrible motivator. And we can struggle with that worldly fear. I was just thinking about it can cause us to put others down. It can cause mm -hmm. us to fear uh, uh, to, uh, again, to lose control and lose power. But then it talks about Shipra and Pua, who were two midwives. They were very lowly. Uh, they were two women who uh, their job was to deliver babies. Well, the, the Pharaoh, who's the most powerful man on earth, he tries to use them to exert control mm. over the Israelites by having them kill these babies. Mm. He brings them in and they say, we don't fear you. Hmm. We fear God. So we're not going to do what you've asked us to do. 
and God ends up blessing them. And because of their, they fear God and what he can do to them and, what he, and, and believing that he's going to bless them, they do not follow the obedience of this Pharaoh. And we see the end up, God ends up blessing them. And so this fear of God, it actually unlocks blessing. It unlocks um, God's favor in their life. Interesting, you said something that was true in that situation and it's true about us is we fear being in control. Mm. When we lose control, that, that's, that's one of most people's greatest fear is I wanna determine the destiny of my life. I wanna determine what team I root for. I wanna determine what I'm gonna order at the restaurant. I wanna choose how much I'm gonna tip. I'm gonna decide what lane I wanna travel or whatever it is. That's people, isn't it? It absolutely is. We, we, we don't know what to do when we're not in control. Mm. We don't know what to do. Everything is about us being in control. And uh, we see that right here. I mean, imagine Shepra and Pua, these two named midwives. We never get the name of the Pharaoh. We never get the name of the king of Egypt. But we get the name of these two lowly midwives who were responsible for helping save the nation of Israel. Imagine how out of control they would have felt when mm. they're standing in the court of Pharaoh, but they trusted God, they feared him, and they put their hands in God's hands. Uh, just an amazing testimony. Wow. And we need to make sure God is in control. And that's, you know, at, let me swap hats real quick instead of being a, a host here with, with Zach. But as a worship leader, a worship pastor, I love when we're worshiping together or personally worshiping those biblical exhortations to lift hands. And I have a friend, his name is Stats Howell. Stats, if you're listening, he lives down in, South, uh, down in Central Flor uh, Northwest Florida. He lives somewhere in Florida. I met him in South Florida. And anyway, here's what he says. He says that, what is the, what is the universal sign of surrender? Someone says, surrender, what do I do? I put my hands up. Yeah. And you, you know, even if it's for that reason alone, if you say, I'm not gonna lift my hands, I just don't do that. Well, listen, if we're gonna be surrendered to God, not in control of my life. That's one of the first ways to do that. So, I love that. Yeah, I, I appreciate. I appreciate learning that early. That any time, if I'm going to say I surrender, if I sing I surrender all, I surrender all, all to Jesus, I surrender. I ought to surrender all, mm -hmm. including this. Yeah. So um, that that's it. Um, great, great stuff, uh, Zach. Thank you so much. That we're already walking through this concept of God. Jesus, our deliverer, even though it's going to be about Moses. Give us a final word. I, I, I'm just so excited. I hope whether you're joining us online or you're able to join us uh, at 10 or 11 on Sunday mornings, I hope you'll join us for the rest of this series through Exodus as we look at deliverer, which uh, is going to point to not only Moses, but ultimately point us to Jesus. This whole story of Exodus is a point, is a pointing us to the salvation that we have mm. in Jesus Christ. So when Moses comes and delivers these people out of Egypt, he, they didn't just go from Egypt straight to the promised land. They had to walk through uh, and, and trust God by day. Mm. They trust the pillar of cloud by wow. day, pillar of fire by night. They had to trust um, God to deliver manna. Well, in the same way, when you and I, when we trusted Jesus for salvation, we didn't immediately get zapped up to heaven. Wow. We have to trust God to, for our daily bread. And, and so I'm so looking forward to us walking through in this, how this story points to our great deliverer, Jesus Christ. Wow, great word. Let me pray for us and we'll be done. And we encourage you folks, please be diving into God's word and always going deeper, taking these resources that we give you and chasing after God with all of your heart. Father, thank you for this moment and thank you that what this moment will produce, that your word is clear, that it will never return void, that your word goes out, lives are changed. Lord, we do together. We sit here and say, Lord, be a transforming God, that the people who hear this, that the people who watch this, that the people who spend time in your word, whether it be about this subject or anything, Lord, let their lives be different because they spent time in your word and they spent time with you. Thank you, Lord. We're believing to hear about great things that are happening in the lives of people who pursue you and chase after you with all their heart. Jesus, our Lord, amen. amen. Well, we say goodbye. So glad that you were with us. Bye now.